Hey guys, okay, March 9th here, a few days absence. Uh, I had business detail to attend to and uh, kept me busy there for three days. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm a business owner and the business that I own is three hours away from where I live. So I do frequently travel for work and uh, it keeps me quite busy. I'm, I'm a very busy man when it comes to my work and uh, you know, not to mention the channel here and I do have a family, you know, two children and, uh, and a home to upkeep, so my time gets pretty tight. So I just wanted to apologize uh, for the absence. Um, you just have to expect it going forward. Uh, when I came back from Las Vegas, I allotted myself five times, five, five times, five days to just relax and recoup. And in those five days, I just squeezed out as much live play as I could and got these episode, journey episodes out as fast as I could. <laughs> Don't expect that going forward. That, you know, I really used my time off there to you know, kind of grind it out and, and get as much edited and uh, rendered as I could. Um, but going forward, you might see an episode once a week, uh, some live plays, a few every day. Uh, you know, there are, are exceptions. You know, if I do happen to get a day off, I will a lot more time to this. Uh, my general rule of thumb is uh, my family is of utmost important, importance and then my job and then any extracurricular activities. Now, um, I don't consider YouTube uh, a job or work in any sense. I actually find this to be very therapeutic, as most of you know. So uh, I do look forward to doing all these. If you don't see videos uh, for a day or two, it's not because I don't enjoy it or I don't want to do it. It's just because I'm so busy doing other things. Uh, this is a very therapeutic thing for me, and I really enjoy doing this. And uh, as always, love discussing things with all of you people out there as well. So just keep that in mind going forward. Hey everyone, welcome to episode 11 of Las Vegas Journeys. Uh, first of all, I want to thank everybody for all the love and support. Uh, the last episode I posted, episode 10, uh, was popular, I think because there was a hand pay involved in that and uh, a lot of big wins in that video. And I just got hundreds of new subscribers over the last, you know, three or four days. And uh, I just want to say a big thank you to all of you. Um, for all of you who are new to the channel, uh, something that I've been saying for the last, you know, six months or so, um, a lot of my, you know, my regular subscribers know this, but uh, when my channel gets popular and the AdSense uh, revenue comes in from my videos, I have no intentions on keeping that. I'm a business owner, you know, I, I make great money. You know, I'm fortunate enough to, to make that kind of money and, uh, you know, have the means to travel to Vegas, you know, a few times a year and uh, do other things. I, I don't need this AdSense money. And, you know, if <laughs> I wouldn't be getting this AdSense money if it wasn't for the subscribers and all the viewers. Uh, my, my channel is not popular by, by any means. Um, I haven't gotten any AdSense yet, but I do know that it's not far away. And when I do get that AdSense in, I'm just going to do random giveaways, $50.00. To each person, not to each person, but you know, if I get a hundred dollars from AdSense, because you have to hit the hundred dollar threshold, and they'll send you a hundred bucks. Uh, and that's how it works. So I'll just give fifty dollars to two different subscribers. You know, I could do ten dollars to ten people, but it really wouldn't mean much. So I'll try to do it in that sense. So uh, just make sure that you're a subscriber and uh, comment on the videos, and you know, I'll just do it randomly whenever it does happen. Um, but we'll uh, we'll cross that bridge when it comes. But I just want to let all you new subscribers out there know that I'm not in this for the money or anything like that. Uh, I didn't know my channel was going to become popular, or I think it's popular. It's it's very small by by YouTuber means. All right, uh, this has just gone beyond all of my expectations. So uh, don't seem alarmed when you see this reaction from me. It really is growing, and um, we have a great family atmosphere here on the channel. Uh, I've always said that. All of us collectively are spinning in Vegas. Uh, me and my wife are not spinning in Vegas. That is the name of our channel, but uh, we now see it more fit, you know, as a group of people. Um, that being me and my wife and all of you people out there. Uh, we have a great family atmosphere here on the channel. Always very positive, very friendly, and uh, me and my wife couldn't be more proud than that. Uh, we very, very rarely see any negative comments, and uh, there's absolutely no fighting amongst subscribers in the in the channel. And, uh, you know, uh, it seems like we're doing something right. So a big, big, big round of applause to all of you guys out there. And uh, 
Again, I just want to thank all of you for the overwhelming and heartwarming support that you have shown us. So, yeah, so it was a great episode, episode 10. That morning was awful. Uh, we lost a lot. And then that second part of the morning, we just hit real big. You know, the hand pay, getting hit with big wins after that. And uh, it, it just really set the pace for what turned out to be a fantastic day. Uh, now, for as for, uh, most of you know, um, I said that my next episode would feature a heck of a lot more vlogging uh, as opposed to the slot live play. And, uh, you know, that is definitely going to be true. Um, after that morning, we went and did stuff with the family. Uh, some of that stuff includes um, going over to the Bellagio Conservatory. Now, guys, I can completely recommend the Bellagio Conservatory. It's free and it helps you stretch that gambling budget. You know, if you can be doing something for, you know, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, and believe me, you can definitely spend a half an hour in the Bellagio Conservatory and not notice a time go by. It's really well done. Uh, you could tell that the people, uh, the curators, uh, put a lot, and I mean just an extravagant amount of work into this display. It changes frequently. When we were there in October, it was an autumn theme. And when we were there in February, it was the year of the rooster, so the Chinese New Year there. And in my opinion, the Chinese New Year was nicer than the autumn theme. Uh, it was just really well done. The colors just worked really well together. And it's almost like you step into a different planet. It's completely, completely mind-blowing. Fantastic. Great work to whoever made that happen. And like I said, it is free. Uh, if you were to go in the Bellagio right from the main entrance, walk straight. Don't go anywhere else. Just walk straight in a straight line and you're going to get to the conservatory. You can't miss it. Uh, as soon as you go into the front entrance, the casino's to your right. You got some check-in desks there on the left, and right straight ahead down the hall is the conservatory. So you really cannot miss it, and it's free. So you guys got to check that out. So uh, I came back uh, from that morning, and I did a vlog on the terrace there at the Cosmopolitan. So I'll let you go ahead and take a watch. Good afternoon, ladies and genitals. Ah, great morning at the Cosmopolitan. Actually, it started off really rough. We were losing, we're taking heavy losses, and uh, oh, just it was just not fun. First, like five machines, it was like almost dollar for dollar, and like really shitty pays. And then after that, it was just bam, 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 bam. There was just hitting us with big win after big win. And guys, I got the fucking hand pay I said I was gonna get, and I got it on my, well, technically my first real day in Vegas. If you wanna count yesterday as my first day in Vegas, I guess you kinda could. But we were only really here for a few hours. Um, so we started the day off with a bang, with a hand pay, and then another 500 some dollar win. Uh, I think I got two wins that were over 500 bucks, and then you know another 400 dollar win. Anyway, I think I'm up today a little over a thousand US. That's just for today. So, uh, can't complain with that, guys. I took a $500 loss last night, so on my total trip so far, I'm up 500. That's since I've been in Vegas. So, but it's still still early, you know. Uh, lots of more losses to come, but hopefully a lot more big wins to come as well. We're heading over to the high roller here pretty soon, next few minutes. Uh, gonna check out the link, and we're gonna see Matt Franco. We're gonna find somewhere to eat over on that uh, promenade down there. And uh, just having a blast right now, guys. Uh, I was a little salty after all those losses, but you gotta expect it and um, really crappy weather. Really foggy, which isn't so bad um, because the humidity goes up a little bit. Us being from Canada, we're used to the humidity. And when it, you come down in this dry desert air, kind of hard on the nose for my family. I, I use uh, saline sprays in my nose on a regular basis, sesame oil. So my nose is normally hydrated, but uh, like my wife, my mother, my kids is different. They have dry noses and stuff like that skin gets dried out my skin don't get dried out at all but anyway this kind of helps with that I personally would rather sunny bring on the, the the dryness all you want anyway great time so far guys and uh, looking forward to the rest of the day I'm so excited I'm like a kid in a candy store so here we go coming to the link try another machine over there too so as you can see there guys a little excited from the terror especially coming off that hand pay and all those big wins uh, you gotta take these heavy losses from time to time. I know that sounds very counterproductive, but it makes you appreciate those big wins and those hand pays even more. You know, when you have a really bad morning, you know, you wake up, you you eat, you go to the casino, you play five, six, seven, ten machines, you lose on all of them. 
uh, that can make somebody very bitter. Um, knowing when to back away and recoup is probably the key in that situation, um, which I did, you know, backed away for an hour, went back. But when you start getting the wins, you know, you appreciate them more. And you end up more happy than if you just would have woke up and got wins. You know, you're like, oh man, great morning, you know, but man, I had a shitty day, uh, lost at five machines, and then I just got a hand pan, and you're really excited because it's a little retribution at that point. You know, I, I, I always said that uh, some of the, the gift of gambling is revenge. Now, I know that sounds completely crazy and ludicrous because it almost uh, makes it sound like you have a gambling problem at that point. I've always said that gambling is complete entertainment for me. I never gamble what I can't afford to lose. And usually I go to Vegas with just a crazy budget and don't even come anywhere near it. So it's like I didn't even spend anything, if that sort of makes sense. To put it into perspective, I went to Vegas this time with a $50,000 budget and I came back with almost $50,000. I'm serious. Uh, that's how it went, uh, especially when everything is comp for us. You're talking every friggin' meal, all the hotels, all the resort fees, uh, resort uh, credit, uh, just everything. And uh, even like up to twenty five hundred dollars in free play, like so. I guess my original point is that you do have to take those losses every once in a while to kind of keep you grounded, and uh, that's certainly what happened that morning, and that's why I was so giddy in that video. Now, um, it was my kids' uh, first time in Vegas, as well as my mother in this trip, and. Bringing them to the Bellagio Conservatory was one of the things at the top of our list. I wanted my, more so my mother. Not really much for the kids there at the Bellagio Conservatory. Uh, you know, with the exception of like just the overall stimulation of, you know, the colors, the theme and all that stuff. Everything going on. Because a lot of it is interactive. Um, when we were there in October, you could talk to trees and they'd talk back. It wasn't very intelligent, but if you were to make a sound, it would make a sound back at you. And there was a lot of back and forth there. And... Um, uh, this time around, like I said, with the year of the rooster, Chinese New Year, it was more just about Asian themed, uh, very extravagant. Oh, it was so well done. And uh, well, I'll let you guys take a video of that. Uh, watch the video now of the Bellagio Conservatory and let me know what you think in the comments. Did you enjoy it? Have you been to the Bellagio Conservatory before? If so, what did they have on there for the theme? Uh, I'd like to know how often this thing gets swapped out. And I'd love to see what crazy ideas these people have came up with in the past. So yeah, leave a comment right down there. Here we are at the Bellagio. We're going to the conservatory. I'm gonna go show the kids and my mother how nice it is in there. And I'll turn the camera around and show you guys too. It's all different from the last time we were here. Yeah, sir. That's all real flowers, that's not fake. They got a nice Asian theme going on in here right now. It is Asian themed. Definitely Asian themed. Very nice. Look at those things up there. Probably for the Chinese New Year. Near the rooster. Oh yeah? Yeah, maybe that's cool. No, that's not even uh, that that I believe is a city I somewhere over in Asia. Is. I'd have to guess. I know where this place is. This is the place when you told me or that big glass roof one. Yes, exactly. So that looked up. You'll have to follow, I'll have to apologize for my ignorance on this one. I don't know what city that is. Maybe Shanghai? I don't know. Maybe Shanghai? Big American flag there in the background. Very patriotic. Take a walk around, folks. Gorgeous. Yep, go That's ahead. all real flowers, too. It's not great. Shanghai, okay. Shanghai. Yeah, I was yeah. right, yeah? Okay. Not like I knew, I was just taking a guess. Can't take any credit for that.
That's not near the rooster. Oh my god, this is so gorgeous. What do you think of this place, Joe? It's pretty cool, isn't it? You like? She wants to get a picture. Okay. Joe, turn around, bud. Picture time. Smiles. Come on, smile. Somebody do. That's not gonna make them laugh. That's gonna make them too. Really cool place, a must to do if you guys are in Vegas near the Bellagio. You got to come down here to the uh, to the conservatory and check it out. It's free, and I mean it's almost at the entrance in the Bellagio. As soon as you come in the main entrance, go straight near there. Oh, there is food. There is food. You're not daddy. You hear that? Yeah, Only I'm the daddy. daddy. I'm the daddy. Yeah, oh. you're a boy. This is the Bellagio Conservatory. And There's 50 of them in there. How do you know? It says here, koi fish. Koi fish are a common feature in the Chinese garden. We have 50 koi fish in the pond. Yeah, but I see one that's black. They're all the way in the back too, yeah. Then we can go around the other side and see them. I knew I should have brought my fishing rod. <laughs> Cherry blossom trees, maybe? Yeah, that's right here. Eat them all. A lot of work, eh? A lot of work involved in this. This is where the talking tree was when we were here last time. Yeah, it was right here. No, that was in the conservatory. Again, guys, you gotta check it out. Mine equals blown every time I'm in here. Very impressive. I'll see you soon. And there you have it. I do have to apologize for some of the quality uh, of my videos. Now, it's not that they're shaky. It's just I do all my filming with my iPhone 7 Plus, which has a great camera if it's pointed steady at something. I notice as I'm turning the camera, even though in person I'm doing it slow, the frame rate of the camera is just complete crap. And it seems to be w way too blurry. So I do apologize if, if some of you uh, are not getting the experience that you should be getting. Um, I do have a production camera here, a Canon XA10. However, that thing is bulky. Like I said, it's a production camera. 
you know, I, I, any future filming is going to be on my handheld device, my phone. And But next time I'll try to be a little more cautious and careful in the filming and I'll try to do it slower. Uh, sometimes you're excited and caught, in, caught up in the moment too and uh, you tend to forget the quality uh, in the moment. But anyway, I'm pretty sure you guys got the idea in terms of the beauty of that place and how extreme they take things. Um, they definitely go to extreme lengths to get you through the doors of that casino. But again guys, all gambling aside, this is free. And you don't have to spend money at the Bellagio. You just, like I said, walk in the front door and go right straight and it's, you'll see it there. And uh, this, you know, can, can stretch your gambling budget and uh, it's just something free to do. And if you have somebody who's a first timer in Vegas with you, trust me, they're, they're gonna be uh, glad that you took them there to that conservatory. Uh, that's two for two now that I've been there and was blown away on both occasions. So definitely not going to be disappointed by visiting the conservatory at the Bellagio. Now, as my vlogs stated there on the terrace, we were heading over to the link. We were going on the high roller. This is the big Ferris wheel uh, that's located right behind the link hotel. And this thing is absolutely amazing. We're going to get to that in a moment. Um, it was raining that day and we decided to walk over to the high roller. And the reason why is because it didn't require a whole lot of outdoor walking. It was actually raining, but it wasn't cold. We just decided to, you know, we get to Cosmo, we cross the road, and then we end up over by like just a little bit past Planet Hollywood, walking up towards CVS and all that. You actually go into the Flamingo, even with kids. Remember, kids are allowed in the casinos as long as they're not stopped. They're in an aisle. So as long as you're in a walkway, your kids can be with you. It's completely fine. Nobody's gonna yell at you, with the exception of Binions. They were complete assholes about it. Um, Anyway, so we walk through the, the Flamingo to get to the high roller. And basically all you're doing is diagonally going through the Flamingo and ending up on the promenade that's completely perpendicular to the high roller. So, if that makes any sense. Like, you, you see the big, big sign, Flamingo, on the strip. Just go in through that entrance and follow the signs. They will tell you the, the high roller. And... And Link, you'll see High Roller and Link. Just follow them and you'll get there. And so we were walking through the Flamingo and just by accident, we see a sign that said Flamingo Habitat. I was like, oh shit, a fucking Flamingo Habitat. Yes, we will do this. Even if it was going to cost money, uh, it was just right there in our path. And I decided that I was gonna bring my kids there. And of course, me and my wife too, and my mother, because me and my wife have never been there either. And this was not our first time in Vegas. So, just stumbled upon it by accident guys and this is a fantastic place as well and again absolutely 100 percent free there's a lot of things in vegas that are free you just got to find them and sometimes stumble upon them if you will so uh go ahead guys take a look at this video uh again i apologize for any blurriness uh you know on the account of my phone kind of going by a little too quickly but i think you will get the idea here as well this is the Flamingo Habitat at the Flamingo Hotel, free of charge. Guys, we kind of came upon this place by accident. We were uh, heading to the uh, to the High Roller over at the Link, and we passed through the Flamingo, and I didn't know they had a Flamingo Habitat back here. With that big tree in the way there. My kids are taking a picture, but they actually were kind of far away from it there now, but they have live real flamingos over there that on display you can see them there it's like a natural habitat well not natural but you know as best as I can beautiful spot wow and they got these big old fish they're called koi fish all through the ponds here it's like koi fish and another type of fish uh, I can't quite remember the name offhand but um, it's really cool guys and it's free so these are just things that you can do in Vegas to kind of entertain yourself and not spend a whole fortune, you know? Um, yeah, I've seen like a, maybe about a dozen flamingos over there on, on, on the, on the, in their habitat, and really awesome. Let's go over here and take a look. Oh yeah, look at that thing right there. Look at the size of that black fish right there. Look at this. You see the size of that black fish? You see the size of that black fish? That's a 25 pounder all day long. Kind of hiding in the rock there. Look at the size of that thing. I want them in our tank at home. 
I don't know if I could see that on the camera here, but oh yeah, you could see him. What a big boy. Oh, look at him. It's not raining right now, it's just water from the trees. Okay. Yeah, kind of crappy weather today. It was off and on rain. Uh, we were pretty sheltered from it because you're able to walk to different locations through the buildings. Um, but not too bad overall. It's not cold. I'm actually sweating a lot right now. I shouldn't have wore this, uh, this heavy hoodie. But we're having a blast, guys. We're on our way over to the high roller. And uh, wish you were here. Wish you were here. All right, we're gonna we're gonna cut loose here and and head over. All right, all right, guys. I couldn't not film this. Okay. There you go. There's the flamingo displays here at the flamingo. There's ten there. I could see. There might be a couple more. I figured around a dozen. I, I think I see some in the back there. So. And guys, that's all free. Just come in here right, the, right in the back. Just follow the, uh, when you come in the Flamingo from the front, from the strip, follow the signs that lead you to the high roller and the link and you'll eventually come to this. You can't miss it, trust me. So cool. How much do you guys want to bet that one of those Flamingos are named Bugsy? All right. Pretty remarkable indeed. Uh, being from Canada, sorry guys, I just don't get to see flamingos on a daily basis. I do believe that was the first time I've ever seen them in person. And uh, just really, really nice back there. Even aside from the flamingos, just what they've done back there um, is really, really nice as well. Like they, they've got it. I don't know much about landscaping, but I went back there and I was pretty blown away. I was like, wow, they really did a good job here. All the koi fish and all the other different types of species in the water. Uh, were a really nice added touch. They had a walkway, and every brick of the walkway was dedicated to somebody, both uh, deceased and alive. So I can only assume that if it, people might be that might have been working on the property, if they got married, there would be a stone there commemorating that. If they happened to pass away, there'd be a stone there. And you're walking on this pathway with all these names dedicated to these people, and I guess that sort of just gives a really nice personal touch to this you know, big extravagant display uh, in this landscaping. So uh, a beautiful spot, guys. And the fish in the water were huge. You can never tell on, on, on the uh, on video. I watched the video and I was like, dang, that fish shrunk. That fish was easily, oh, I'm gonna say maybe three and a half feet long, but on video, it just it looks like any normal fish. But they were huge, big, big koi fish. And uh, you know, like I said, if you're looking for good you know, no cost, absolutely free, uh, entertainment in Vegas. This could be on your list as well, in addition to the Bellagio Conservatory. And they're not very far. You know, you're talking like across the road through a casino, and that's it kind of thing. Um, so yeah, after we left the uh, habitat at the Flamingo, we walked over to the promenade. This is just, you're going to exit the Flamingo at the other side, and you're going to be at this little alley, little promenade that takes you to the high roller. And... Uh, we got there, we made our way over to the high roller itself, and guys, the high roller is absolutely amazing. Uh, that, this was my first time on it, and I was, you know, I'm, I'm naturally scared of heights. You probably think I'm crazy saying that, getting on an airplane, 69th floor at the Cosmo, getting on the high roller, the fucking Hoover Dam. I think I'm overcoming that fear, but I'm still very squeamish when it comes to, to, to heights, don't get me wrong. Uh, but the high roller is a very smooth ride. We never felt any shaking. It was so smooth. You couldn't even tell you were on some sort of amusement ride. That's how comfortable it was. You got to remember that these pods, they weigh like 40,000 pounds each. That is fucking big. When you're standing at a very, you know, long distance away from the high roller, you don't see how big it is. You know, especially if you're looking at from from the air, if you're looking at photos online, it just looks like a regular Ferris wheel. Just remember that everything in Vegas is bigger than it actually is on paper. Uh, you're completely blown away when you're right up next to this thing. Like I said, each little pod weighs like 40,000 pounds. You could fit like 30 people in there. Some of them have a bar. There's eight flat screen TVs in each one. I mean, that's completely crazy. And you gotta remember, it's like 550 feet, yeah, 550 feet high, 530 feet wide. So 
That is huge. I do believe it is the tallest, or at least the biggest Ferris wheel in the world. And, um, well, uh, I'll let you take a watch of the video of us getting into the, uh, into the high roller and just at the bottom, ready to make our ascent. Go ahead. <laughs> we on the high roller. We got one by ourselves. Spot the cabin. We all know that trick. The walls are made of a special type of glass that's completely see-through. So every spot in the cabin is great. Good job. We are. We got one tied to ourselves. The only thing is we didn't have a garter on ours. Not all members. No, what, what, you plan on having a martini? No, no. But let's keep looking at like Some of them do have garters. I'll get some video when we're way up high. There, dark in my face. Who wants to see that, Mom? The cabin is secure. Exciting, isn't it? So uh, I think what we have in front of us is 30 minutes. That's how long it takes to go around. 30 minutes. Uh, I'll get some video at the top. There you go, guys. So if you actually, if you go back and you pause, uh, whenever I have my camera point it towards one of the other pods with the people walking by it, you can get an idea of the size of these things. Now, if you look at a regular Ferris wheel, um, you usually have to get kind of, you know, squeezed up and sit down in your seat and it's no bigger, wider than two people, you know. These things are huge and uh, like I said, very smooth. You can't tell you're on a ride, you know, well, other than the fact that you're 550 fucking feet in the air, uh, you know, that aside, it's very comfortable, and uh, I think even if you're scared of heights, like I am, you'll be completely fine. There's no worries there. Um, like I said, it was raining hard that day in Vegas, and um, it goes to show you how vulnerable the city is to these uh, heavy rains. Now, if you look at Las Vegas, uh, you know, geographically, you got mountains surrounding Vegas. Vegas is technically at the bottom of a bowl. So when you get these heavy rains, they come down off the mountains and they start to settle into the bottom of the bowl. So Las Vegas starts to flood and it does not take long for water to torrent through the streets. And you know, Las Vegas has come a long way in the last decade, two decades, uh, with a lot of these tunnels that they've made in the city to kind of, you know, uh, kind of work these waters out of harm's way. And, um, it's worked to a great extent, but there are exceptions where water does get into places where it's not supposed to. And when we were about a quarter of the way up the high roller, we looked down and we seen a street that was completely flooded. The water was just raging. You, wow, I was blown away. And this is a street, guys. It's not one of the water waterways that was made to channel the water away from you know public areas. And my evidence of that would be the stop sign that's right there. If this was a waterway, there wouldn't be a stop sign there. You know, that's that was for cars. It looked like the water was going into one of those underground parking garages. I could be wrong on that. Um, but I do know that that was a road leading to somewhere. I just hope that nobody was caught down there when that happened because this water was so powerful, it would just look like it would sweep somebody away. And of course, you could see all the garbage surrounding that's being you know brought up from this uh, torrent of water, uh, which also lends to the credibility that this was not made to, like I said, channel water away from uh, public areas. It was just too much water in a, a very short amount of time and, uh, you know, the consequences of that. So anyway, I took a video of that, not entirely sure why, um, but I guess it's just, for, like I said, to show you guys everything Las Vegas. Wow, guys, look at the flooding from the rain in Las Vegas. Oh look at that, that is all the road. That is just completely swamping that road. It's going down into that parking tunnel. Yeah, it's in a parking garage. Oh my god! Oh, wow. We're lucky. I think that's like a storm drain. It might be a storm drain. Hopefully it is. Tiger, look at the air. Is it on the carriage? Oh, nice. 
Yeah, yeah, that's a lot of water. That's raging. Yeah, look at the um, monorail. Look at that. Well, we're going to be up here. Nothing can flood this. Okay, on all sides. From vast well, what, if, what if you shake it? No. Don't. Wow. Oh, didn't expect to do that. There's a lot of garbage I've washed up from that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's not like it's pouring out there. Like, it's really not. So there you go, guys. Uh, very interesting indeed. It was the first time we've seen that in Las Vegas. And of course, you're in the middle of the desert. And seeing these, you know, raging waters, uh, I would say is kind of rare. With the exception of, you know, like the January, December, February months where they get the bulk of their rainfall. Technical difficulty there with the phone, guys. Um, yeah, so I couldn't really get an idea of how deep that water was. Uh, there was some kind of people down there that kind of gave us a little idea of scale, uh, stop sign. And like I said, this road was going down and there was like another road there and the water was almost level on both sides. It looked like it might've been about three feet at the top and more around four, maybe five feet towards the bottom. And uh, you could just imagine falling in something like that as fast as it was going through. Um, it, well, it could kill you, it could kill anybody. I mean, you really, you're not very much uh, in comparison to raging water like that. So I hope everybody got out of that okay. I hope nobody got hurt. I don't think anybody did. But um, again, you know, if you're caught off guard by these flash floods, God knows what could happen. So anyway, yeah, uh, I guess the the excitement of the high roller is, of course, the apex. Uh, right at the top, 550 feet. Um, you'll notice, guys, in this high roller, I had to mute some of the volume because there's music playing in the background. I don't want to get any copyright infringements on my YouTube. I don't want to lose my page. So if you hear the volume being muted, I'll have other music playing in the background that's not copyrighted. Uh, but you'll still get to see uh, the amazing view at 550 feet in the air in Las Vegas. Go ahead, enjoy. 550 feet, we're at the highest point on the high roller. And here's the view, guys. I did it. Okay, the wheel did it. We the just slipped. Five hundred and fifty feet in the air, the world's highest observation wheel. Okay, I'm gonna let you guys catch your breath here. See over there. We'll talk soon. Hello. Beep, 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 beep. Oh, And there you go. It's it's pretty cool. Uh, as you get up to the apex, uh, there's this thing that comes on the TV, a nice presentation done by a male actor, and he kind of counts it down for you. You know, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, and then when you get to 1, 0, then you're at the apex. And uh, he gives you lots of neat tidbits and facts about Las Vegas. There's even trivia, and uh, it just makes for some entertainment as you go up and as you start coming back down again. Um, because it does take 30 minutes for a full rotation, so you might get a little bored. I didn't get bored at all, uh, but I did find that these extras on the TV screens uh, really, really help the experience. Um, I'm going to say that the high roller is definitely worth it. Um, there is some cons to it, of course. One being that it's really far off the strip, and the view could be so much more better, because the eastern part of the high roller you're really not getting much of a view there you get the airport you kind of get like you know the whole housing and, and the, the rural areas now and you know all these little suburban areas too now the other side is better you know obviously the strip but even then you're still kind of limited to what you can see um, I just found that the location could have been so much more better 
I don't know where else you could put that on the strip. It's such a big thing, but you know, they definitely tried. The view is fantastic, don't get me wrong. Like you could see the Cosmo. Um, well, you see there in the video, but there's a lot you can't see. And like I said, if you're looking east, the mountains in the background, I guess, pretty cool. But if you're in a, co you know, a high rise resort, you see all that anyway. Um, so there really wasn't much there looking east. I did show the, you know, with the camera, that view anyway. I mean, who wants to look at the friggin' airport? That's the last thing you wanna see when you're enjoying yourself in Vegas. The only time you wanna see that airport is when you're arriving in Vegas, okay? You don't wanna see it when you're leaving. You don't wanna see it while you're there. Um, but yeah, looking westerly, amazing view. But guys, it's worth it. You're 500 feet in the air. I did, you know, I, I'm assuming that if you go at nighttime, it's going to be spectacular, all the lights and everything, because I know the view from the Cosmopolitan 69th floor is mind blowing. You know, I could, I sit out there sometimes for an hour just staring. It's just complete, it's like you're getting like a trance, you know what I mean? There's just, Vegas is so busy. And it's funny, like sometimes, like I found like me and my kids were trying to count the, the amount of uh, um, lights from cop cars, uh, ambulances, fire trucks, try to count them and you get lost. There's just that much going on. I'm serious. You see cop cars, ambulances, uh, fire engines, and you hear sirens all the time. And we try to play that little game together. It's just so amazing from that high up. Um, and the high roller really isn't that much higher, I don't think. So, I mean, you know, look to the west and uh, when you're on that thing and, and you'll be happy. It's worth the money. Uh, I've already went on it. I probably will never go on it again though. It's not that good. Like I said, it could have been benefited from a better location. But guys, if you're a first timer in Vegas, add it to your list uh, to say you've done it and that you've experienced, especially if you're in a smaller resort that's not so high, if like you're in the Flamingo or something, get up on that high roller, man. Go check it out. You will definitely be happy with the view you see up there. Um, but if you really want a spectacular view, get your ass to the Cosmo and get your ass to the 69th floor. All right, so, uh, after we were done there, it was time to head over to the Matt Franco show. And uh, very strict camera policy. And uh, they made it well known that there was people, random people sitting in the crowd that watch for people filming on their phones. And if they find you, they immediately kick you. There's no warning. It's a zero tolerance policy. So I couldn't film any of him doing his magic. Uh, but I did take this little video before the show started. Here we are at the Matt Franco show. We had something to eat over at, uh, what was it called? That oh, something in Burley. Flower and Burley. Uh, yeah, flower flower and, Burley. and Burley pizza over on the promenade by the link. It's like brick oven pizza. Pretty good, it was all right, it was all right, yeah. Um, and now we're here getting ready to see Matt Franco. It's a strict no camera policy here, so. Yeah. I'm pretty sure they just turned that spotlight on me to make me feel like an asshole because I I'm filming. So. so anyway, the kids are excited. <laughs> so yeah, we're looking forward to it, Matt Franco, and uh, it's a good day today, got a hand pay, a lot of nice wins, checked out O'Shea's Casino by the Promenade, uh, not really much there, my mother played $1.50 on a multimedia machine, got a free spin bonus but only won 6 bucks, so no luck. So anyway, I'm going to put my phone away before I get kicked out, um, I'm not going to go backstage to meet Matt Franco, it's going to be my two kids and my wife, So, but she's going to film it. So I'll have that to show you guys. Right oh, so rich. Right All right, so I'll show you guys the backstage meeting with Matt Franco. Wish I could show you some of the show. I don't want to risk getting kicked out. I'm here for my kids, so. You guys want to drink? Oh. Boy. And there you have it. Like I said, not very much uh, because I really didn't want to get kicked out. You know, especially with my kids there. I was there for my kids. Matt Franco is my son's favorite celebrity. You know, his favorite magician, and my son is a fan of America's Got Talent, and of course Matt Franco won America's Got Talent, one of the seasons anyway, and uh, my son just likes magic tricks and all that sort of stuff, so uh, he, he, he loved the show. I will say, guys, that Matt Franco's show is very good. Uh, no problems there whatsoever. He's very interactive with the audience. Uh, he tends to pull people in from the crowd on almost every trick. Uh, we tried our hardest to get up on stage. We never got picked. Uh, it was kind of upsetting because every time he said he wanted somebody, I stood up, my wife stood up, uh, and we were pointing towards my son because he's such a big fan of Matt Franco, but he never got picked. And I think I understand why. A lot of the tricks, when he, when he pulls people on stage, 
uh, he asks them, you know, some pretty, pretty crazy questions that are really not geared towards uh, children. So uh, a lot of tricks was take this and hide it in a place that nobody will ever ever think to touch. Where are you gonna put it? You know, of course the people who are on stage put it down in their bra or put it down their pants or something like that. And I'm just glad that my son never got on there and had to do that. Um, my son understands that too. It was a great show, very engaging with the audience. Uh, we seen Chris Angel in October, and I. If it depends on what you're looking for out of a magic show, um, to be able to say which one's better. I personally enjoyed the Chris Angel show a little better. However, if you're the type of person who likes more comedy, uh, more engagement with the magician, definitely go to uh, Matt Franco. I just found that Chris Angel's tricks were more bigger. Uh, a little more uh, risky, you know, like Chris Angel was floating around the arena. Uh, if you have a, he had a ladder and he walked this way down a ladder, it was completely crazy. Matt Franco didn't really do anything like that. He was more of like a card tricks, coin magic, uh, stuff like that. Stuff that's geared to a more engaging audience, you know, because card tricks are not very well done from a very far distance, so it get, gets people to come on stage and then the cameras kind of zoom in to give you an idea as a viewer out in the audience, just exactly what's going on. I recommend Chris Angel, I recommend Matt Franco. Um, like I said, it's going to come down to what your tastes are as an audience member, right? But I give two thumbs up to both, Chris Angel and Matt Franco knocked it out of the ballpark. Now, it didn't quite end there. We um, had VIP passes, so I bought three VIP passes one for each of my kids and my wife to go backstage and meet Matt Franco. And this was, you know, a birthday present for my son, you know, going to the Matt Franco show, but also to meet him. So I never went backstage, but my wife took a video of the entire thing and I'll let you take a look. Ooh. What do you got there? <laughs> Wait. Cool. Yeah, I know that guy. Look at these. These are anything you need silver. Yeah, brandon has got one in his hand. Oh. Yeah, we came prepared. We <laughs> make sure it works okay. Thanks, guys. Just lay it in the bag up here. Cool, it works good. This is yours, right? Yeah. How's it going? Yeah, yeah, fun. Sweet. What are Brandon's a big fan. Thank you. Yeah, I yeah. This, are you, are you, who's who? Brandon and Jordan. Is Brandon? Yeah. Jordan? Yeah. Cool. yeah. It's Huff's birthday. And you're sitting right next to. Yeah, it's not as cool as I have Yeah, there's a second one. You have two, too? Cool. That's how you told me. Most did I spell your name right? Yeah. Yeah. The show was awesome. Yeah, yeah, we really enjoyed it. Happy to hear that. Yeah. And can you spell your name for me? J O R D A N. <laughs> We're all the way from Canada, oh, really? the East Coast, yeah. Awesome. Um, we uh, gave Brandon the, the tickets for his birthday. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, that's yeah, cool. his birthday was on gift. Yeah, February 4th. Yeah, so. Keep trying, right? Yeah. For my job line, like, you know, if not you, it's like kind of the ideal area. I was only getting a Oh, no, I'm, I'm good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Awesome. awesome. Oh, no. So, what's your favorite part of the show? Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, cool. okay. So, how long are you guys in town? Here you go. We're here till the end of next week. Next week? Yeah. Oh, cool. So yeah, we're here week. Yeah, we just got here yesterday, last oh, night. Fantastic. So, yeah, it was one of the first things on the. Uh, I love that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you so Did much. Did I give you a deck of cards yet? Did no. I hand you one? No. no. <laughs> there you go. Perfect. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much. Appreciate you being here. Happy birthday. There you go. So, a completely cool, cool ass 
meet and greet right there. Uh, Matt, Frank, Matt Franco was an amazing, amazing person, a very engaging with my kids. As you could see from the video, guys, my kids were starstruck. If you don't know my kids, let me tell you that, you know, they're like any other kid. They're hyper. They, you know, like they're not scared to speak their mind. They were completely, completely silent during that meet and greet. They were, they were starstruck. I was quite surprised. Um, I, I knew that they were going to be probably a little shy, especially uh, my oldest son. Like I said, Matt Franco was like his idol, and um, he, he uh, just completely starstruck, starstruck, and he just kind of like, kind of froze up. But Matt was really nice. Uh, my kids each had two photos. He signed the two photos, and um, he also signed a deck of cards for both my two sons and my wife, and he signed their VIP passes. So. In all, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, that's ten items. And if we, they would have had more, he definitely would have, you know, signed those things as well. Uh, he asked questions to my kids, wished my son a happy birthday. It was just uh, a really great experience for them as well as us uh, to be there and share that moment together. Um, just an overall great guy. So if you do go to the Matt Franco show, I know I got a deal on my tickets. It was only an extra $40 per person to add the VIP. And uh, he definitely seems like he doesn't let you out of his presence until you're fully satisfied with his, his attention. So uh, I would say it's definitely worth it. I only wanted to get the three. There was really no need for all of us to go back there. Um, but yeah, it, guys, do it. Do it up. I'm telling you, great, great, great guy. And uh, you won't regret it. So after there, we went back down into the casino. And guys, here's where we're going to get to our first slot live play out of this Las Vegas journey. Uh, down through the link, you're going to see a place called O'Shea's. One of Las Vegas' little hidden gems here, guys. Uh, when I first walked through it, I didn't really think much of it. It was kind of quick. I was getting out of the rain. It was raining heavily at the point when we first went in. And I was just rushing to get to where we needed to get to. I needed the bathroom at that point. Whenever I come downstairs, I was a little more relaxed. I had a lot more time to, like, you know really observe my surroundings and O'Shea's casino uh, was right there for the taking so we took a look around small casino great atmosphere oh man guys this one is geared towards the Irish people you know the whole Irish theme if you will and uh, well I got Irish in my blood guys and uh, it was so cool beer pong there happening uh, you know green drinks green beer stuff like that so cool. The atmosphere it was electric. It was kind of young, young crowd in there. And uh, just overall enjoyed myself. And there was nice live music. And the music was good. There was a guy there with an acoustic guitar singing Snoop Dogg's Gin and Juice. I shit you not. He had that thing down pat. Rapping like a professional rapper. And the he made it work with the guitar. It was awesome. I wish I would have got that on film. I highly regret it. But I actually stopped and listened to him during that entire song. And I was enjoying it. I was like, holy crap, he knocked it out of the water. I used to be a fan of Snoop Dogg back in the day. I, you know, that album, Doggy Style, was one of my favorite albums of all time. And it's still up there for one of the, you know, albums that I get one of the, the most enjoyment out of. And, uh, yeah, he killed it. I didn't really play much there at O'Shea's. My mother uh, wanted to play a little bit. Uh... I did set up one machine though, uh, Monopoly Luxury Diamonds, guys. And here, remember this is coming off of the hand pay. On Lightning Link, uh, Gold Bonanza 500 some dollar win, the Big Five Safari 360 some dollar win, uh, the uh, Cash Money Deluxe VIP 419 dollar win, going over to O'Shea's, sitting at Monopoly Luxury Diamonds, $25 a spin, high denom, high limit, and get the bonus on the very first fucking spin. Take a look. $25 a spin here, guys, Monopoly wheel, $5, max pay. Go wheel. This is gonna be crazy, okay. Two so times, yellow and red wheel whip. Two times on the yellow and red. Give that wheel a spin. This could spin, be really good. Baby. Spin. Jackpot would be amazing. Illinois Jackpot. Spin. Illinois 75 times Lucky five. Lucky you. Double win. Double win? Oh, this is gonna be really big. Uh, now that was a wheel of a good time. $785. Oh my fucking god. Yes, sir. So you do it. Big bets, 25 bucks. That was amazing. 
it was my first spin. I, I'm telling you, I put $55 in the machine and um, I was trying to figure it out. I knew it was $5 denomination. I didn't know if it was three line monopoly. It kind of like threw me off guard. So I just hit max bet and said, fuck it. Then I noticed it was $25 a spin. And then the bonus hit landed, boom, $750 win right there on Monopoly Luxury Diamonds at O'Shea's Casino. Um, my mother did play at various slot machines, but it was like $20 at a time. And like I said, she doesn't bet at the levels that I bet at. Sometimes watching her uh, isn't really worth filming. You know, like even when she does hit bonuses at a dollar bet or whatever, $1.50, they're usually not very good. So I, I really tend not to film them. Um, so I didn't bother filming them. Like I said, she wasn't spending much at a time and it really wouldn't have been anything to show you. And you know what? She didn't, she got a bonus there. I think it was good for like six or $9. It was on a multimedia machine at a dollar fifty bet, and uh, it was very upsetting. Uh, but you know, coming off of that win over at O'Shea's, um, just completely crazy at that point. I'm up like two grand, and uh, on the day, and uh, just great, great fun. And again, more evidence on just how fast your luck can change in Las Vegas. So, um, but you know, even with that win aside. O'Shea's was a nice little place. Now, I don't know if they have rooms there or not. I guess it's all part of the link. I don't know anything like that. Like, I don't spend enough time there to know how that works as an entirety. But guys, check out that promenade. That promenade uh, where the high roller is in O'Shea's has something for everybody. I noticed a virtual reality uh, gaming place there. And they had the, the virtual reality being advertised outside on an like with an umbrella trying to get people to sample it before going in. Uh, lots of different restaurants, everything from Gord, Gord, uh, Gordon Ramsay's uh, Fish and Chip. I've seen lots of pizza joints. Uh, there's In-N-Out Burger um, and just tons of more places like that. Clothing shopping, all sorts of stuff, guys. You could definitely get a half a day's worth of entertainment and shopping just in that promenade. So check it out. There's no obligation to spend any money. You can just walk through it and take a look. And uh, But definitely check out O'Shea's. Nice little place. Great, great upbeat atmosphere. Young, Irish. Really, really cool fun, guys. So uh, that's pretty well all the video I got outside of the Cosmo that day. Uh, when we left O'Shea's, we come back to the Cosmo, went to the Henry uh, for some food and uh, just got right back to, uh, to more slot playing. And uh, when I got back, I do believe the first slot machine that I played on was Irving the Viking. Now this is a, an older game, and uh, I tend to play these from time to time, especially when I'm at properties off the strip, like on Fremont and stuff like that. This one's made by IGT, and uh, they can be pretty good. I do play the High Five Casino app on my phone, and um, you know, so I'm able to get used to these types of games. But I ran $100 through this one, and uh, I'll let you guys take a look.